The goal of this video is to take you through steps for completing challenge number 23. In challenge number 23, the entire cube is done, except two of the corner pieces, even though they're in the proper location, they're not what's called oriented properly, meaning that this cube here in the front right top face needs to be rotated clockwise to put the white sticker on top. And this cube over here in the uh, front up left corner needs to be rotated counterclockwise in order to get the white sticker on top. And if we can do that, we'll be able to complete half the cube, sort of a checkerboard pattern of all the corners being in the proper place and their uh, correct orientation. If you go to puzzle 15, uh, you could mess around with it, you know, mix it up. And based on the what you saw in the last video, we can get the eight corners into their proper place. And you could click on any three reds, and it will do a three cycle on them. But I'd like you to try to mess around by looking at this cube up here and seeing if you can do it by pushing the green faces and only doing the uh, the three red corner, the three swap, just one time total. In other words, you see the one over here? And he's, he's also down here. I want to get the one in this where the nine is. So I can see that if I move the 15 face, the one gets moved to the top. And now the five face, if I do that twice, I get the one over here. Now I look for the number three, which I can't even see because it's over here. But if I push number 23, so this is the bottom face, so I push number 23 once and maybe uh, twice, I can see the three over here. And then if I see 15, I push that 15 twice and the three's gotten moved up to where it belongs. You see one three. And the seven goes here and he's over here. So I want to move this face, the front face, the 17. So I click on that. Got to do it three times. And getting the nine is a little bit tricky. You can see that nine over here. Um, it wants to go in this spot. So I'm going to move the bottom face, 23. Now the 9 is right under where it wants to go. And if I do a 15 move, the 9 will, will go there, but the 3 will sort of move out. So before I um, move the 9 in, I'm going to take that, that back face, which is, um, I, guess it's, I guess it's the 11. And I'm going to get that 3 out of the way. Now I'm going to move the 9 in with this 15. And now I'm going to do 11. I'd like to just go counterclockwise with it, but it's not a choice. I'll just do it three times. 1, 2, 3. So now I have the 1, 3, 7, 9 in place. Now all I have to do is get the 19, 21, 25, 27. And what you can see here is that the 21 is in the right place. And... The 25 is also, I have two things in the right place and two things in the wrong place. Uh, that's not actually what I want. I want to have one thing in the right place. And if I push, uh, if I push 23 again, now I have nothing in the right place. And again, now I have the 19 and the 27 in the right place. But the, So it's kind of annoying when this happens, because I can't, even by pushing 23, get just one thing in the, um, in the right place. Uh, when that happens, basically I have two things in the right place or uh, nothing in the right place. So I'm just going to do a random three cycle. I'm just going to click on any, any three. And watch how this does a variation on the eight move pattern. That I did, uh, that I showed you in the previous video. Okay, so now let's see what we have going on here. 19 is in the wrong place. Uh, the 27 is in the right place, and these three are in the wrong place. So I'm going to do another of those three cycles. 19 wants to go here, and 25 wants to go there. 
So I've avoid I, I've avoided using the uh, the three cycle as much as possible, but now I have those pieces are all in the in the right place. Now if I go to puzzle number sixteen, it's very similar. I mix that up. Now the numbers aren't on the pieces, but I can see like this one over here, which is in the way in the back corner. So I'm going to move him around a bit. There's the one over here, which is actually this piece. And then if I do um, 13, I can see that one moving up. And now the one's in the proper place here. Now I search for the three, which is over here, which is on the bottom layer. So I'm going to move him over there and then move face 15 and I could actually see the three. One more 15 and now the three is in his proper place. Uh, the seven is over here but he wants to be over there. I have to move this uh, this green face which I think is number 17. Oops. Oh, it was, but I have to move it uh, three times. I have to move it counterclockwise, which isn't an option. So I'm just going to do it three times. And now I need to get the nine, which is over here, to this spot over there. And I'd like to just move this red face, which is 15, uh, but it will mess up my number three that I have there. So I'm going to do a um, the back face, which is 11. Do that once. Now I can move number 9 in, and now I have to undo my 11, but I can't, so I have to do it three times. And now I have 137. Now don't worry that it's upside down, that's the goal of this video. And I look down here, ah, I'm very lucky, 19, 21, 25, 27. So all the, I didn't have to do a three cycle at all. But, see how the four corners don't have white stickers on top? That's where this comes in. If I push this AB button, now I look for a number that sort of uh, has the bottom of the number on the top right and another one that has the bottom of the number on the top left and click those two. And it's going to do the pattern that you're going to learn in this video that's going to flip two corners. It's going to make one go counterclockwise and one go clockwise. So you can see. And now I'm going to do this again. This time I'm going to do the nine first and then the seven, and it's gonna do this pattern again. This is like a 15 move pattern that looks really complicated, flips two corners without messing up the rest of the cube. Now I look around, there's these two upside down, the 21 and the 27, so I click there, I'm gonna do the, uh, the 21 and then the 27. And when this sequence is done, the cube will have a checkerboard pattern and be more than halfway solved. And the goal of this lesson that I'm going to get to is how do we go about what happens when I push this, this red button and then I click on two corners. How does it, what, what pattern happens? So that's coming. That's the goal of this lecture. Key to understanding how to flip two corner uh, pieces without messing up the rest of the cube is to examine again puzzle number 12. Puzzle number 12 was part of the commutator lesson. And here, just like when you're flipping two corners, I have the 8-4 need to be like flipped in a sense, and the 5-1 need to be flipped over. And move A fixed the 8 and the 4 which was great. Sorry, move A doesn't do that. Move A swaps these two with these two. It's move B. Move B does flip the things that are in positions 4 and 8 while at the same time messing up the entire bottom two rows. And if I undo move B, I fix the bottom two rows, but then again, my 8-4 gets switched back. So the trick was for puzzle 12 was to do move B and instead of undoing move B, even though that fixes everything up, it also messes up the 4 and the 8. 
So instead, I don't want to, I want to keep the 4 and 8, but the 5 and 1 want to get switched. So by doing move A, the 5 and 1 end up where the 4 and 8 were. And then when I undo move B, this is going to all get fixed. And remember, the first move B switched the, the 4 and 8 around. Well, now it's going to switch the 5 and 1 around, which is exactly what I want to happen. And then A inverse is going to put the 4 and 8 back where it came from. So this had the form uh, of B, A, B inverse, A inverse, commutator. Well, we're going to see that fixing the Rubik's Cube, flipping two corners, is going to have the same sort of idea. The B move is going to sort of flip one corner, and the B inverse it would flip it back, except I'm going to put another corner into that spot before flipping it back. The first step in learning how to flip two corner pieces is to look at this puzzle. This isn't actually one of the puzzles on the app, but if you look at it, and if you get an actual Rubik's Cube, you can put uh, eight stickers on top and put uh, one sticker down here and see. In four moves, you can get this corner piece, the white, red, it's white, red, and green, uh, you can get it into this spot here. But it, it would take four moves, and you could think about what those four moves might be. And if you get a Rubik's Cube out, you can work on those four moves. Okay, now, if you come back, I'll show you what the four moves are. Look very carefully. Um, I want to bring this red face down, but if I just if I just do that, it kind of moves that guy also. So what I'm going to do is first move him out of the way by moving him there. So I'm doing a um, down inverse. Now I can bring the red face counterclockwise. Then I can do down clockwise to put him in place and then bring the red back. So those those were four moves. So we basically want to get this cube. It's in the right spot, but it's not it needs to be flipped. We want to get it so that the white sticker is is over here, actually, or over here. We just don't want it on the very bottom. So um, you can think about these. This is this is. Uh, it would take three moves to get it to become the last challenge, and you should get a cube. You can easily just even if it's not at all solved, you can just put eight stickers on top here and put one white sticker over there, or any color sticker, and just think about what seven moves would do this. So work on that, and then come back. Okay, welcome back. Here are the first three moves. Watch what happens. I definitely need to get this guy out of the top layer, and this accomplishes it. Right inverse. Now, this move's kind of, I, I find this move kind of interesting. By moving the yellow face clockwise, that piece ends up all the way over here, which seems like it's like sort of out of the way. But now, when I move the red face clockwise, look what happens. Now, I know it, it's, it's hard to visualize that, and if you have a cube, it's a lot easier. But it was just three moves, and in those three moves, I managed to get this piece over here. Uh, notice how that last move, the one... Uh, this this right move it also brought this guy into this position right underneath it so like a lot of stuff happens in that that third move and now it's at the spot where we can do four more moves to finish it those are down inverse right inverse down right so you should practice those seven moves, and I hope you really 
you know, you really concentrate on those because this is there's only four parts to the Rubik's cube, and this is this is the second. This is going to lead us to the second of them. So just to look at it again, right inverse down. That puts that piece in a position so that when I do right, he ends up exactly where I want him to be. But now he has to move out of the way. Sometimes I think of it this way. It's like a bus. The bus comes to the stop. This guy gets on the bus. And then the bus comes back. Here it is on actual Rubik's Cube. I have my white sticker there, the nine. You can do this. Your cube doesn't have to be solved already. Uh, just put the nine stickers in that configuration. Here I go R minus D. See that, that white sticker is over there, the nine? By moving D there, and then when now when I do R, it actually moves that nine sticker exactly where it wants to be. That's the first three moves. Now to get the nine sticker next to the eight, I do a D minus, move him out of the way, move those guys down. The bus picks up the nine, brings him back, and that uh, piece has been flipped. So that's a seven move sequence. Well, that only that flips one corner clockwise. It moves the white sticker from here to here. But it did, it messed a lot of stuff up. These gray cubes, although we don't like see it. So let's see what happens. Uh, that was puzzle 21. Now I look at puzzle 22. It's not puzzle 22. It's puzzle 23. Now here I have two that need to be um, flipped. One needs to be flipped clockwise. The, the white sticker has to go here. And this one needs to be flipped counterclockwise, so the white sticker ends up there. Right? If I move this one clockwise, it would it would put this, this green sticker on top. So the trick to this one is to do the seven move sequence we just saw to fix this guy in the this this is called the front right up corner. So I'm going to do that seven move thing. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Well, that's great that I got the piece there. But look at the rest of the cube. It's all destroyed. And that's actually okay. Because imagine if I said, oh no, I, I destroyed my, my, my cube. You know, let me let me do those um, those seven moves backwards. Well, if I do those seven moves backwards, this cube is going to turn uh, counterclockwise back to the way it was, and everything else is going to get fixed up. I'll be back to where I started. So instead of just doing the moves backwards, I'm going to turn the top face counterclockwise once. And now I'm going to do the seven move sequence backwards because what that's going to do it's going to turn this cube counterclockwise which is exactly what it wants to do and it's going to fix up the entire uh, the entire bottom so doing that doing those seven moves counterclockwise is going to be like this right inverse uh, down inverse right down right inverse down inverse right and now when I undo the sort of that this has the form of a of a commutator so when I do this 
whoops, when I do this, it's going to fix it. Here I'm on a uh, regular actual Rubik's Cube. And you can do this, just uh, you can just put the stickers on top of your cube, even if the cube's not solved. Here I do the um, RDR and the D minus R minus DR. So that's fixed, but the bottom, everything else in the cube is all messed up. If I were to undo it right now, well, it would fix up the bottom two layers, but it would also change the nine back by making it go counterclockwise. But it's the other guy I want to be counterclockwise. So here I do the seven move pattern. It makes the nine flip clockwise. And instead of unflipping him, I'm going to bring that seven over into the spot where the where the nine was. And now when I do the move in reverse, R minus D, D minus R well, and so forth, uh, it fixes up the entire cube. Come back to puzzle 16, you can see that when I click this red button now, and I click on the nine, then the seven, you can watch it actually do this pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Move the other guy in and undo it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Move him back. I could also see what happens if I have like, these are already done, but now it's gonna unflip them or it's gonna flip two that are already fixed. Just wanna show you another sort of configuration. Okay, so in this one, this guy wants to flip clockwise, and this guy over here is the other one. So watch what happens. It's going to do those seven moves. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. But for the B move, it's just going to move to a, a U instead of a U inverse. And even if I want to go ahead and flip something like uh, 27 and 7. It's going to bring the 27 up and then do the 7 moves. I'll show you in a second as it is doing it now. Then I'll show you how to fix it, how it fixes it. As you can see, there's a lot of the only movements that really happen are the R and the Z face. Okay, so, so take a look what I have here. This, um, this piece over here wants to get flipped clockwise because the white sticker is over there, and this one wants to flip, get flipped counterclockwise. So when I do this and I click on the 7 and then the 27, what you should expect to see is it's going to somehow get, first it's going to get the 27, I think, onto the top face. Then it's going to bring this guy over to this spot, the number 9 spot, and do the 7 moves. Then bring the 27, wherever he is at that time, which, which I think is going to be over here, it's going to bring him to that spot and undo it and then bring the 27 back. Let's take a look. Okay, 27 up. He comes over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then he moves into place. The un he undoes it to flip that guy and then bring him back. Whoops, where he came from. <laughs> a couple extra moves, it seems. Okay, so that's the way it works. So in the last video, we did... Uh, got the four corners into place. We put these little stickers on and we maybe need to do a three second. Now I'm going to remove all the stickers. I want to get the yellow stickers onto the bottom face and the white stickers onto the top face. I want to, it's called orienting the cues. And I'm going to show you how this sequence that I showed you can work. So here I have two that need to be flipped, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. I'm going to do the, the RD pattern and then move the other guy in there and undo it. Now there's two more cues that need to be fixed up. There's that yellow one needs to go clockwise 
and I have to look for the other one. This white one needs to go counterclockwise. So I'm going to actually move the, the white one with into that position 7 by doing L2. Now they're in the position 7 and 9 that I'm kind of used to. So I do the R, D, R, D, R, D, R pattern. U minus R, D, R, D, R, D, R, D backwards. And then I have to move this back. Whoops. I better do U move. And then L2 gets them back. And now I have my cube more than halfway done. I have the uh, checkerboard pattern. Next video, we'll move on to the edges.